In section 2.3, we want to look at some additional displays of quantitative data, besides the dot plot and the histogram, which of course are the classics. All right, so the first type of graph we're going to look at is a stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot is a graphical display of quantitative data along with their frequencies. The rightmost digit forms the leaf, and all digits to the left of the rightmost digit form the stem. So numbers are often rounded to fit the stem and leaf structure. So just look at what this means here. So over here on the right hand side, these are the leaves. And over here on the left hand side, those are the stems. So you can see we have stems and we have leaves. Hence the stem and leaf plot. Nice, huh? All right, so what they're saying is they're often rounded, so we'll round these, and these in fact were rounded, these particular um, numbers. These represent, in this example, the prevalence rate, which is the number of with the disease per 100,000 residents um, of chlamydia in 2018 for all 50 states, Washington, D.C., and the four U.S. territories, which are American Samoa, Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, and Puerto Rico. All right, so... There are the stems, there are the leaves, and now read what it says. It says the leaf unit is 10. Hmm. So then this one is a 10, this eight is an 80, and so on. And it tells us the decimal point is two digits to the right of the colon. So it goes over two like that. So that particular one is 110, 180, 200, 200, and then there's the 70, and then 200, and there's an 80, right? So I was gonna list out the data just so you guys could see it. It's 110, 180, 200, 270, 280. I'm not gonna list all of them. Um, the three, three stands for 300 over here and 30, right? Because the decimal is two spots over. So if you look at the colon, three colon three, the decimal is two spots over. So if you swing it two over and put a zero in the middle, that leads you to 330. See how that works? And then the three and then the four would be 340, 370, and so on. I'm not gonna write all of them. I'll just leave it at that. Now the advantage to a stem and leaf plot, well, there's a lot of advantages. It's actually like a histogram, but it's a histogram that's built off of the number system. So you don't bin things in an arbitrary way. They're binned automatically by our number system being binned into 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. And also it's like a histogram in that these digits all say take up the same amount of space. And so do these next digits. So see that first column those all take up the same amount of space, and then there's the next one, and so on. So you can tell that this grouping in the 40s and this grouping in the 50s, actually it's 400s and 500s, those are the longest groupings. So most states and these territories are in that region right there. All right, so let's answer some questions about this. Oh, before I go any further, a split stem sometimes, and that's what's actually happening here, it's too crowded. So like example, look at these these fives right here. If you tried to make the 500s into one long stem with leaves, the leaves would be all the way out to here and it'd just be kind of hard to read. So we split the stem into two groups. So all the ones that are zero through four are in the first one and then all the five through nines are in the second one. So 200 goes here but 270 goes in the second line. 330 and 340 go here but 50, 60, 70, 80 would go here and so on. And that's what that's telling you. So actually these are split stems. They're split into two rows, right? And that's what that's telling us. Zero to four in the first stem, five through nine in the second. All right, so let's look at these chlamydia rates. Um, chlamydia is a sexually transmitted infection. It can be cured, but nevertheless, it, it's something that is tracked by the CDC, which is the source for these data. Yes, these are real data. This is what they really are from 2018. So the data set includes all the states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. This means there are how many leaves? Well, you could count them, 
but you kind of don't have to because you know it's 50 for the states at least at this point in in life so 50 plus one for dc plus the four u.s territories which are the islands american samoa guam northern mariana islands and puerto rico so that would be four more so that would be 55 total leaves and of course you could count them And I, in fact, did count them, and there are, in fact, 55 leaves here, but you're welcome to double check me. Michigan appears in the chart as 5 colon 1. I thought it'd be interesting to see Michigan, since we, that's the state where I'm based in. So Michigan is 5 colon 1. What does that mean? Well, remember, it means the decimal is two spots over. It says decimal is two digits to the right of the colon. And then the leaf unit, which is a 1, is actually a 10 right? So it's 510. So the U or so Michigan, let me say it that way. Michigan has a prevalence rate, which means um, basically the prevalence of chlamydia in Michigan in 2018. of it's 510 per 100,000 residents. So out of every 100,000 residents in Michigan, we expect 510 of them to have chlamydia, at least in 2018. Oh, sorry, my 18 got weird there. I'm close to the end of my paper. So I'm not sure that's better. <laughs> there we go. Now, how many states have rates above Michigan? Okay, speaking of counting, so we don't know which of these three ones Michigan is. So we'll just assume it's the highest one and we're gonna count the states that are above it. So there's four twos, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 by the end of the th six line. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So there are 27. And I put states in quotes because they're not all states, of course. And then it's out of the 55 that there were total. So it's 27, oh, 27 states, because they asked how many states. So 27 states. And then they want to know a percent. So to find that percent, you have to do the 27 divided by 55 and get a decimal for that. And then we'll convert that decimal into a percent. So that'd be 49.1. So 0.491, which is 49.1%. Make sure you put the percent sign to indicate that it's a percentage. So Michigan's really in the middle right so if you if you compare michigan's rates michigan's really smack dab in the middle of this group right very 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 much an average state in terms of chlamydia um, in case you're wondering by the way that's not a state right that's the washington dc area which makes sense because sexually transmitted infections like that are more um well they're more prevalent in urban areas and so since that's the one that's really a city rather than a state, it's going to have a super high prevalence rate. If you pick large cities, then the large cities are actually going to be all around here. Um, but because we're actually doing states and then D.C., that's where D.C. falls. All right. So last but not least, let's compare and contrast this with a histogram. So some advantages and disadvantages this has. So for the advantages, there's no artificial bins right? We don't have to make groups and put the people into those groups, right? I could say groups. It's just based on the number system. So that's nice. And what's really nice is you can um, see and f work with all the original data, more or less. I mean, grant you, this was rounded and it was, but nevertheless, you can still really see how close we are, right? These, this was natural rounding. So even though a, a state's not really 650, it might've been like 652, you know, it's still really close to there, right? But you can see the original data. The disadvantage is that when you're working with a histogram, advantage, oh, I spelled advantage wrong, <laughs> advantage, there we go. 
disadvantage. When you're working with a histogram, you have a vertical axis for frequency. And that makes it really easy to see how many are in one group or how many are in another. But here you have to count them. You have to sit there and be like, all right, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, crap. Did I get all those sevens? Maybe I gotta, I gotta go back and start again, right? So there's no frequency or vertical axis. So you have to count and you have to count carefully. So that's a concern. Also, the modal class is a little bit um, harder to find. Modal class with the histograms, whichever the highest bar is. Modal class here, you actually have to look for whichever number occurs the most often, which is actually 47. It's right here. So 470 is the mode here, right? Because it's the most frequent. Whereas in a histogram, it's just whichever bar is the easier or is the tallest. These are also, by the way, called stem plots sometimes. So it's okay to stem and leaf plot or stem plot. So in a histogram, the mode is the highest bar. In a stem plot, the mode is the most frequent number. So that's a little bit harder to see. But again, what's really nice about them is that you actually have your original data and you can really see that. That's a really nice feature for these. Um, so it's a big advantage. So there are times when we use histograms. There are times when we use stem and leaf plots. They both are useful.